Thank you for joining me on my masterclass. Now today, we're going to be talking about the Nigerian Naira. Now this is a clarion call, it's sort of like um, a warning. You know, the Nigerian Naira is going to fall to probably about 700 uh, Naira to one dollar. It's, um, there's a possibility it's going to be more, but in the year 2022, that's the new year that we're entering, um, it's very likely that the Nigerian Naira is going to fall uh, to about 700 Naira to one dollar. So, how are you going to protect yourself? Because obviously, that's devaluation, and once it happens, you know, it's going to affect your net worth. Now, if you look at the video I did in September of 2019, I actually warned of what is happening now, where the value of the Naira is about 570 Naira. I actually warned about it. I was accurate in my, uh, would I say, I, I was forecasting. That wasn't a prophecy, you know. Um, I don't have prophetic powers. That was just an economic forecast. And before then, I had done another video uh, where I forecasted what the Naira is going to be and I gave solutions to how you can preserve your family wealth and here I am again very sadly I wish that it wasn't so but I mean it, it, we have to face it you know it, the reality is the reality the Naira is going to tumble again in 2021 sorry 2022 we are in 2021 it's already 570 it's going to be about 700 in 2022 now the thing is how do I know this First of all, let's explain about currency. Let's explain about currency. So there's two ways you can have currency in any country. You can either have a fixed currency, you know, you peg your currency to another currency, or you can have uh, a floating currency. Now, you know, you have a floating exchange. If you peg your currency to another currency, like what you have in uh, West Africa and Central Africa with the CFA and the Central African franc, uh, it's called the CFA franc. Now, what happens is that you have an agreement with another country, um, maybe like a country that, that previously colonized you or a country that you have like some kind of like um, relationship with or consanguinity with. Like in this case, the, the uh, Francophone countries, they, have, uh, they had a, a colonial relationship with France. So France, the French Treasury, the French Central Bank controls their, um, their currency. So their currency is pegged. So I mean like uh, France guarantees um, the value of their currency. And in exchange, a lot of their transactions, a lot of their import exports are being controlled by France. So in other words, they are not really, really uh, independent. So the, uh, France controls their currency, so it's pegged. And the same thing with if you go to the Caribbean nations, you know, with the Eastern Caribbean dollars, it is pegged to the US dollars. Also in Barbados with their own dollars, it's pegged to the US dollars. So now in this case, it, it's really funny because the United States did not colonize them, but for um, uh, you know, like when I say uh, location and for economic values, you know, with the organization of American states, they chose to peg their currency with the United States. So the United States controls their currency. In Nigeria, we used to have that up until I think it was about um, 1959, you know, where uh, we started the Nigerian Central Bank. And then gradually um, uh, it was fully divested. And then uh, by about 1963, you know, um, I think it was fully divested, although, although there was still some relationship Relationships. But over the years, uh, it, it's, it Nigeria's currency is completely divorced from the uh, British pounds and from, from Britain. So Nigeria has a floating currency, a floating exchange. And when you have a floating exchange, what happens is that your exchange is governed, or the, the value of your currency is governed by the laws of demand and supply. So it's governed by the laws of demand and supply. Now, if you look at it, now even though the currency is governed by the laws of demand and supply, countries all over the world, not just Nigeria, when they see that the value of their currency is going down, because it's one of the uh, th one of the one of the um, symbols of your sovereignty. So when they see that the value of their currency is really really going down, countries begin to intervene by um, you know like uh, artificially increasing demand for their currency. So Nigeria does that, but by and large, you see, you know. In Nigeria, basically, you know, the laws of demand and supply are in favor of the United, United States dollar. If you look at it, you know, um, let's just look at Nigeria, for instance, education. You know, there are about seven, 70,000 Nigerian students in Ghana. You know, some, like if you look at the official data, they will tell you it's about 3,900, 2,500. It's not true. You know, there's about 70,000 Nigerian students in Ghana and they are spending about a billion dollars a year in Ghana. 
So that's a lot of money going out. Then if you look at the United uh, Kingdom, you have something between 20, 21 to 25,000 in the United Kingdom. And they're spending, you know, close to um, half a million, that's not half a billion in uh, a school fees, you know, that is coming from Nigeria, that's left Nigeria, is going to the United Kingdom. And then for the United States, the data is not very clear. But, you know, it, there's a large um, uh, number of Nigerian students there. Now, let's look at health, health. So Nigerians, um, they, there's a lot of health theories, tourism out from Nigeria to other parts of the world. Right now, a lot of it is going to India. A lot of it is going to India. There's something like, and you know, nobody's really sure, so we're gonna be giving estimates. So there's something like between 300 to uh, $700 million leaving Nigeria annually going to India for health tourism. And then there's some more going to the United Kingdom. And then a lot of it is going to the Middle East because like Northern Nigerians like to go to the Middle East for their health tourism. So there's a lot of money leaving Nigeria. A lot of Nigerian money that should be circulating in Nigeria is leaving Nigeria, it's going out of Nigeria. You know, and then you also have the uh, fall subsidy regime. It used to be very reasonable under President Sebastian Jayardo and Jonathan, but right now it's taken a life of its own. So it is, say, probably um, I, I think. Well, if we are if we're going to go with what they're telling telling Nigerians, it's about one point three trillion naira. You know. Uh, every annually but I, I don't think that's true i think it's about 1.6 but let's go with what they're saying so all that money is leaving nigeria is going to the countries where they're getting the dirty fall from because they're not even getting good fall from the for nigerians they're getting dirty fall and then if you look at all the factors if you look at all the factors for instance you know the very ill-advised twitter ban right now as at this moment nigeria has lost 600 million dollars uh, from uh, the twitter ban and the twitter ban is not even effective because all nigerians you know basically uh, are on twitter even uh, officials of the night of the buhari administration that banned twitter yeah, they are on Twitter. You know, we've caught them. We've caught them several times. We've caught a minister. We've caught a presidential spokesman. Um, the governors don't even attempt to hide. You know, now you might be asking yourself, where is this money uh, that we are losing coming from? You see, like a lot of advertisement, a lot of transactions to be done on Twitter. Now. You know, they can hide and use Twitter, but they can't do all those transactions. So we're losing money on Twitter. And it's not just that, you know, a lot of money used to come into Nigeria it, because, you know, it's very, very hard to gauge these things because of how cryptocurrency works. We have to do an estimation. Some people estimate that something like $800 million was coming into Nigeria through cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Dogecoin, you know, sheep, all of that. Now. The Nigerian government banned it, so the, it, so Nigerians who used to trade in that are now putting their money in banks in other countries. So something like eight hundred million dollars has, has left the Nigerian um, economy. So if you think about that now, you see how money that should be circulating in Nigeria, propping up, propping up our naira, is is going out of the country. It's going out of the country. A lot of it because of government uh, government policies. If you look at the monetary policy of the of the Nigerian government, the Central Bank of Nigeria, it's not very encouraging. You know because you know the the interest rates are so high, and what happens then is that you know Nigerian. Um, uh, Enterprises, when they want to borrow money, when they want to uh, take loans, what they do is they go to France to, to banks like BNP Paribas or they go to Germany to Deutsche Bank or they go to the United States and England to HSBC to borrow money at lower rates because to borrow money uh, from Nigerian banks, the rates are just like they are through the nose, you know, through the roof. Nobody is going to, in his right mind, except a very desperate person, will take such loans. So you have more money going out. You have more money going out. So there is a negative um, effect on the on the on the naira. There's such a high demand for dollars in Nigeria. Such a very very high demand for dollars in Nigeria, and. With the government policy, with the behavior of this government, I'll give you a very good example. Between 2010 and 2015, foreign direct investment into Nigeria was about $35 billion, $35.25 billion actually. And you can look this up, you know, it's on the um, UNCTAD, the United Nations uh, Center for Trade and uh, Development. It's on their website. You can actually look at it, you know. But then, in between 2016 and 2020, you know, the um, foreign direct investment to Nigeria was only $11.55 billion. So you can see it's falling drastically. So there's really very, very little that is propping up the Naira. So the Naira is dropping. 
you know the central bank can keep intervening but if as they keep intervening their their own dollar stocks are going to be depleting seriously and then it's getting it's going to get to a point whereby you know like if they, they have to stop doing it otherwise then the country is going to be insolvent we cannot uh, um, fund our um, our imports anymore you know so if you look at it now I mean, uh, every indicator, you don't have to be like a prophet. Every economic indi indicator is against the US dollar, at least while this administration is in power. You know, even if Buhari gives the Nigerian Naira something like Viagra, it's not going to rise. So you have to protect your own world because you're not responsible for all of this. You're not Buhari, you're not his cabal. You have to re protect your own personal world. Now, if you're going to protect your wealth and you think that okay, you're going to protect your wealth and put it in real estate, you're not being very wise because real estate prices in Nigeria are, are being affected by the inflation. The inflation rate in Nigeria is something like 15%, which is very, very high. You know, if you look at the debt to GDP ratio of Nigeria, it's also very high. If you look at the debt to income ratio of Nigeria, currently it's about 98%, but Fitch, Fitch, Fitch is, um, is, a, is a rating agency. They are saying that it's going to rise by about 395%. I mean, that is even scary. No nation on earth right now has that kind of uh, debt to GDP ratio increase, but Fitch is, is predicting that it's going to rise uh, by 395% in the year 2022, you know, or up to 2020, 2026, if we do not have uh, a good administration coming in 2023. So what you want to do, because I mean, like, I'll, I'll tell you what, I had a house in Abuja. When I saw what was happening, I sold that house. Now, my neighbors, they're telling me, don't sell the house. It's a good investment. I mean, I'm an economist. I think economically, I was a spokesman to, uh, to a president. I, I was with the economic management team, watching them. So I know how these things operate. I sold that house. I changed the money to US dollars. Now, that same house, for half of what I sold it, I can buy the house again. So you don't want to put your money in real estate. How can you protect yourself? You want to put your money as, I mean, as soon as you earn your money, you want to put your money into US dollars. You know, if you're going to do that with the, with the parallel market, if you're going to do that with broad exchange, if you're going to do that with your bank, however you can legally, look at the word I'm using, legally do it, do it. And then don't wait until the, maybe like, uh, uh, do it immediately. As soon as you get money, as soon as you earn money, change it to dollars. And then another thing you can do, if you cannot get dollars, buy gold buy gold. You see, gold used to be money everywhere. And so even some countries still have gold standards to protect their money. That's another way you can protect your money. Because you can take gold from Nigeria to uh, South Africa, to Ghana, to England, to, to, to the United States, and it maintains its value. Gold is a fungible economic um, uh, good. That means that its value is universal. So if you can buy gold, and then your, 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 your um, wealth is going to be safe. You know, and then another thing you can do, you can go on a website like Bamboo, you know, um, Bamboo, and then you can buy US dollars or you can buy US, UK, you can buy international shares. That is another way you can protect your wealth. But to just leave your wealth in Naira, I'm going to tell you, you're going to keep on getting poorer and poorer through, through no fault of yours. My name is Rena Mokri. If you've watched this video, if you've watched it and you're a bit confused, you can put your comments, your questions in the comment section and then I'll do my best to respond to it because I, I don't like poverty. And I see what's happening in Nigeria with the irresponsibility of the Buhari administration and I'm trying to help Nigerians to preserve their wealth. You know, so you can put your questions in the comment section. I'll try to respond to them. Once again, my name is Wendell Mokri. Thank you for watching this video. And remember, I do not have a WhatsApp aura. I do not have a Telegram channel. I do not have a Gmail email address. Thank you for watching and God bless you.